welcome to another First Impressions video brought to you by MMO Play. Today we're taking a look at the new action RPG, The Incredible Adventures of Van Helsing. And before going and jumping into the hack and slash action, I'm actually going to take a little bit to look at some of the mechanics of the game and compare it a little bit to some of the other names out there like Diablo, Torchlight, Path of Exile. So, I am in the first town and right here we got our crafter here, you got our store, so you can just go and sell off stuff. And get rid of all this junk. Just right click all that to sell, and I actually could have hit a button to sell all, but that's too easy. Other thing you could do is, you see this was Lady Katarina. She is a companion. She follows you around, she goes adventuring with you, and she'll help you out. And a lot like the pets in Torchlight 2, you can load her up with items and send her to town. I actually chose to town portal out instead of doing that. So, we'll get to that in a minute. Store, and just sell off all this. Sell off all my blues. Alright, make sure I'm not gonna give up any upgrades. Oh, that's actually a really nice weapon. I wonder if she has a better one. You can see she has an inventory too. Uh, 17.55, 16.25, well, a lot of critical damage. I'm gonna give her the gun. There. I actually have a meleeing, so the actual DPS. All right, next thing is the artifact forge. This is kind of the crafting. It is a lot like Torchlight 2, where you can turn three items into one. Some of the recipes. All right, so I could just take three of an item. It's not to be the same. I don't have to put three boots. It's just going through my list and seeing what I have. Let's see. Uh, yeah, we can get rid of that. Hey, I don't need that. And there we go. And then you hit forge, make a new item. 23, not, wow, lots of DPS and spell power. That's actually more spell, more spell power than my current weapon, so I'm gonna go with that, because I don't actually melee all that often, so my stats are more important. Stranger, you'll need that in Head to the laboratory. And first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually just remove this. It's gonna cost me 500 gold. I got 28,000, so I'm alright. And there we go. You can come over here to this tab Alchemical Components and Potions. And in here, I have all of these essences. Kind of the crafting system, or modification system of the game. So I got these gems here. You can get this one. Weapon, lightning damage, armor gives reflected damage, accessory gives, but I can also go ahead and modify it. So how about that and that? Hey, look, that makes an ethereal essence, which is one of those. So I could kind of switch them around. Or, you can kind of combine essences. You can see that the items have an essence cost, so five essence costs. Well, these, that belt has 25 essence capacity on it. So, I could just throw five essences on it, or I could start combining. What do we got? I got uh, crit damage, and I'll well, just look. Throw that with... Come on. That, and it would increase it to 12% crit damage on a weapon. Whoo! Armor dodge and accessory mana. Alright, so I'll drop the belt in here. Drop that. Boom, 12. 17. 22. There we go, my belt now has 3 luck, 10 hit points, 10, and 7 mana on it. And now that we're finished looking at all of the crafting. We're going to go and look at some combat. This is an action RPG after all. This is on the highest difficulty, by the way, so that's why everything's being a bit of a bullet sponge. And the very first fight I get is against a rare pack that spawns tornadoes and drains mana. So this is a, a fun pack. Also, this is the second major zone in the game. So we're about level 8, 9-ish right now. It's a couple hours into the game, not too long. The max level is 30 if you're curious about the amount of content. On the higher difficulty, it seems like I do an awful lot of shootings and scooting. I've been building myself like a mage with secondary abilities in ranged attack. So my left click is my shot, my right click is my lightning bolt. You can hit change your active ability by hitting F whatever. So F1 is fireball, F2 is lightning bolt. It is not kind of how you'd expect most mages to be either. You can't just spam abilities, you can't just lightning bolt, lightning bolt. No, you got mana issues, you got cooldown. 
Another thing is you have Rage. I can modify my ability by hitting one, two, or three. Those are those little blue abilities right above the Lightning Bolt. One would actually make it so it arcs to more people. Two would temporarily stun everyone. It takes Rage, which my max Rage is 50, and I get it from taking shots and killing people. So it's pretty... It's kind of an interesting system. You can modify your abilities on the fly, but you can only modify them when you're actually killing things. So you can't just sit there and whatever. Also, I have two auras and two tricks. My tricks right now are right next to lightning bolts. The heal, and the other one is kind of a mana shield that reduces my damage, but it takes some mana. The heal also heals everyone near me, including Katarina, which you can give her potions and she'll drink them when she gets low. You can also heal, heal, which for me is A. But if she were to die, she would stay in ghost form for a while and do a whole lot of nothing. She also does give you auras too. You can buff her as you level up. And that'll give you some auras. And that was a rare pack. Took a little while. Do a lot of shooting and scooting. It's not going to be like low difficulty Diablo. Where you can just plow through monsters. You can see even normals. I do have to do some kiting. This again is the highest difficulty. Think about playing Inferno with maybe a couple of... Uh, the Turn the difficulty up a couple of notches. Add extra player monster power. That's it. So, if you're curious about the fact that the combat's a little slower paced and the fact that everything is kind of hard to kill, you do a lot of kiting, that's the high difficulty. High difficulty does give you better drops, so it kind of keeps you going a little better, but you do spend a lot more time kiting. It also could be my build. I've been building purely on spell power, so that's not quite viable yet because I can't just spam abilities. And I only have the two spells I've been leveling. So it just could be a build issue. Other things I learned in the game is when you... You get reputation for completing missions for people and probably also killing bosses. And that will let you unlock perks, which... Are another way to modify your character. So, a whole lot of modification and specialization in this game. You get stat points, you get skill points, you get perks. You get Katarina, you can level her up in a certain way, and I'm making her very tanky because I'm ranged and I want her to hold on to aggro for me. In this case, she's dead, which is why I'm getting lit up. You also have all your options with the gear. You can make your craft your items you want, although it's kind of random so it's hard to do. And then you can modify them you want if they have gems and lots. So it takes a lot of the aspects of Torchlight 2 and does them at least as well. That said, the game is fun. There are a couple of issues people have been having. I'm not going to say that they're necessarily complaints. One is multiplayer. It's available. It's a little hard at times. It doesn't work perfectly. Another thing is make sure when you're running the game, if you go out and buy it, it's available on Steam for $15. Or if you get it at the time of the recording, it's actually on sale for 10% off. But if you get the game and you're playing it, run it through the actual... Go find your Incredible Adventures of Van Helsing file, the executable file, either the 86 or 64, whatever operating system you're running, and run it from there. If you run it from Steam, you actually get some latency issues, some FPS issues. And then the other one is there is no New Game Plus. There's no, like in Diablo, you obviously have the four difficulties and everything. There's no respawns, no higher difficulty, anything like that. So it's limited replayability, although you can play different styles of characters. Overall, love the customization in this game, like the feel and setting, the play between Van Helsing and Katarina is pretty funny, some of the voice acting is pretty darn good, and the story is interesting so far. Van Helsing reminds me a lot of Geralt of Rivia, which is one of my favorite characters nowadays, I'm actually a huge fan of the book series too. Like the game, check it out. It is available for $15 on Steam. Like the content. Stay tuned to more for ML Play. Thanks for watching. Get over here, Katarina.